This episode of New Jersey Living has been recorded in Newark, New Jersey. Newark is certainly one of, if not the most recognizable city name for New Jersey, uh, being that you have the airport, uh, you have uh, Newark Penn Station, which all train lines run through uh, here regionally and locally. And of course, behind me, it's gonna pan up a little, is the Prudential Center, home of the New Jersey Devils hockey team. Uh, just behind me right here, you can see the statue for Martin Bordeaux, the great goalie for the Devils for many years. Uh, this also serves as a venue for numerous concerts and other sporting events. Uh, Seton Hall basketball plays some of their larger, I guess more high attended uh, home games will be here. And uh, we also have, as you can see in this banner, an upcoming UFC fight. I'm not big on UFC, so I don't really recognize the names, but it is uh, Shakur Stevenson. And it seems like uh, Rob Robson or Robson, I cannot pronounce the last name. So if you're a UFC fan, this may be familiar to you. Uh, so we're going to divvy up episodes on Newark, similar to how we did Jersey City. There'll be a few more of those episodes. There's a lot more ground to cover in terms of different neighborhoods in uh, Newark than uh, the Jersey City dynamic. So we'll have quite a few. Uh, first today is going to be Ironbound. So Ironbound section is close to the train station, east of Newark Penn Station, leading towards Jersey City. Uh, a lot of unique features about that given area, uh, that neighborhood that distinguish it from a lot of the other neighborhoods in the city. So we're going to see a, a taste of that today. And we're also going to take a stop just to get a little look at the uh, station and point out a few features about Newark Penn Station. So those who have been along for the ride, those Jersey hunters, welcome back. For those who are here for the first time, welcome aboard. Let's get it started now. Welcome to New Jersey Living. If you're looking to learn all there is to know about the New Jersey real estate market, the neighborhoods, dining scene, iconic locations, things to do, this is the channel for you. I'm Corey Jones and I'm a real estate agent with Compass Real Estate. And I receive phone calls, emails, text messages from folks just like you looking to either buy or sell right here in New Jersey, specifically Northern New Jersey, suburbs of New York City. So thank you for joining, for all those who have come along for this ride, those Jersey hunters, I appreciate you. Those who are new, welcome aboard. Be sure to click like, subscribe, and the notification bell to stay aware of all of our upcoming content. And we have quite a lot of ground still to cover. So let's get this show started now. Let's get it. Do stick around towards the end of this particular episode. I do have an announcement regarding apparel. If you haven't already noticed, I'm wearing a New Jersey Living Polo, which I'll be wearing for our episodes moving forward. But we also have some uh, items for you, my viewing supporters. So uh, stick around to the end. I'll have an update on that later in the episode. Our first stop on the Newark tour is here at Newark Penn Station. This is the lesser known of the two Penn Stations because everyone has heard of the Manhattan Penn Station right there in Midtown on 34th Street. Uh, the Newark Penn Station is a central hub, however, for New Jersey. Both a bus depot and a train station. Uh, you have New Jersey Transit trains as well as Greyhound. They stop here. And there's New Jersey Transit, Amtrak, and the PATH, which both starts and terminates here at Newark and takes you to Manhattan as well as to Jersey City. So this is very much a commuter, commuter hub for Northern New Jersey. Um, just to pan around a little bit, you get a really a sense of what's around the station is hotels directly across from the station and on the opposite side of this station essentially begins Ironbound which is our first stop today. So we're going to take a look at three properties in that Boundbrook section I'm sorry uh, Ironbound section and um, we will also kind of do some street views to give you a feel for the general aesthetic uh, and, and kind of climate if you will for uh, for Ironbound. We're also going to take a stop at a very well-known movie scene location, which you've probably seen in some of my other episodes as well, particularly Bayonne. Actually, today is going to be the same uh, movie uh, that I featured in Bayonne. 
that was featured uh, or filmed right here in, um, in IFM. So let's get ready for the ride. I'll see you at the next stop. Here we are at the iconic scene that I mentioned just at the previous stop. Behind me, you can see directly, is St. Stephen's Grace Community Church. As I pan up just a little, give you a full scope of this, and I'm gonna flash up the new movie scene that I've referenced. So, Tom Cruise's version of War of the Worlds. This was the actual location where the alien ships first emerged from underneath the ground. Streets started to break up, turn around the church. This church right here cracked and started falling apart. And they started racing through like this uh, town front main street area, which would have been where we are right now. So we're at, I'm just spinning around a little bit. We're at an intersection of Ferry Street, Wilson and Merchant. All right, so uh, this kind of divides up directionally, which way you can go here. Uh, in the ironbound section and some of the walking footage that you're going to see you're going to see it's a ton of retail all along the ferry uh, once we get beyond here there's more uh retail you can see this is portugal ave they've named uh over here as uh ferry splits off the other direction heavy uh portuguese population here as well as uh south and central america yeah this would have been that scene uh that you saw in that main clip of the movie, of course, where Tom Cruise lived and where the bridge came down. That was in Bayonne, and you can check out my Bayonne episode just to get a feel for what that scene looks like today. So uh, this is the heart, very much the heart of Ironbound. A lot of shops, a lot of restaurants. If you're looking for authentic Portuguese cuisine, it is here. Uh, I have dined here several times uh, with my wife and I, and uh, yeah, you, you're gonna get some authentic food here for sure. I have some clients that have bought in this area as well. We're gonna take a look at one of the streets we're gonna look at today. Two properties are on Marn Street, and uh, I had a client that purchased on Mar Marn Street just a little, a little over a year ago. So we're gonna see, uh, and that's just a little further down this road here. Uh, we're gonna take a look at that and another condo option. And your I am bound market you really are looking at two to four bedroom properties sometimes it could be condo sometimes it could be a single family you can even find some that are multi-family still in that four to five hundred range uh but that three to four hundred mid four hundred can get you as you'll see today um some really nice options uh for you know residents now in terms of the big three we're gonna go, go ahead and jump into that now uh, those who have viewed uh, these episodes before, you know, I always touch on big three in terms of demand. So demand is local train, it is commute to the city by car, and it is schools. So we've already seen Penn Station from where we are right here. We're about a mile from Penn Station. It's here, it's accessible. That's definitely a check. Uh, in terms of New York City, you cannot see uh, from video uh, down this street right here behind me now. Uh, but I'm looking at some of the Midtown Towers uh, from here. So driving wise, yes, this is uh, uh, with no traffic. This is a 25 minute drive into uh, Midtown. Um, schools, now schools, newer schools are not A-rated. And I, as you, if you've seen any of my episodes, I go by niche.com in terms of uh, school ratings and it is not A-rated, all right? Um, so it's really, up to the individual to determine, all right, if that school system is something that I can work with or I wanna do private or a parochial religious school. So um, there are both right here uh, in this community, in the neighborhood, uh, and a lot of families do and are comfortable with public school option right here in this neighborhood. So we're gonna take a look just a few blocks down at our first property and we're going to, uh, again, have two homes right on one street together, then a condo option after that. I'll see you there. We are here at our first property stop. This is 78 Marn. I'm gonna pan up just a little so you can 
see the full profile of this particular property. You can see it's all brick front sided on the sides. Now, this is very, I would say, indicative of what you see as I pan around a little bit in ironbound section. So the age of the homes are going to date, for the most part, somewhere in 30s, 40s. Um, many constructed with very similar floor plans or or general concepts uh, may have been changed through the years. This one beautifully, beautifully updated. Uh, three bedroom, three full baths, one half bath. Listed at 399, sold at 440. On the market for 16 days, so it went really quickly. This was the highest and best scenario. So if you've seen some of my other episodes, highest and best is basically a protocol where multiple offers are submitted. And because of those multiple offers, agents will just give it a general disclosure as to when to submit to all the other agents. And basically best price in terms of what out. So this is uh, one of those scenarios. And our next one is almost across the street a few houses down. Again, just a very nicely done layout, all upgraded and very well maintained. Two zone heating, central air. So as you may have heard some of my other episodes, when you are in areas where there are old homes, you don't often find central air. And this is uh, another perk that was here. Some of these properties as the one that I mentioned earlier, I sold, which is a further down the street, uh, are two family. This one was converted into a two family. Uh, but this one right here is a single family, although it includes the description of a mother-in-law suite, which is likely maybe a basement level or lower level that has uh, its own bathroom <clears throat> and maybe even a mini, a mini kitchen possible. All right, so this is the first property. We're just gonna cross the street, a couple houses down, take a look at spot number two. See you there. So we are practically uh, practically across the street at 83 Mark. Uh, pan up again so you get a profile of this particular property you can see that I uh, brick facade is on the lower end siding is on the upper side this property too bad uh, too bad unlike what was it uh, 78 sometimes that comes down to whether the basement is finished and there's any living space there but this one fewer bedrooms and baths uh, this one well maintained not as newly or recently upgraded but very well definitely very well maintained uh, was on the market for a total of 35 days uh, list price was 385 and it sold at 390. All right, but uh, well maintained. There's not as much competition on this one as the other. It just didn't have the same number of bedrooms and baths, of course. That's one thing that's very ob obvious, but the upgrades were not as new and uh, eye catching as the other property. So, uh, but again, gives a great option for those who may be in the market for lower price points but uh want to be in an uh, area that is convenient for transportation and many people look for certain types of community uh, you know as i mentioned before uh, you know there's certainly populations here that there's a lot of uh, family and sister community as a place of culture so some people look for that dynamic specifically others are looking for that great opportunity for either for investment or as a first time buy knowing that this is a great first time option in terms of your buy because it is a very solid rental market here. So buying a place here, having it as a first home, moving on from it in five years, but keeping it as a rental is absolutely a very viable option for the location. All right, so we have one more spot to uh, take a look at that's going to be a condo option, unlike these two, which were uh, single family. And uh, that one is a very unique kind of condo scenario that we'll get into once we arrive there. So I'll see you at the next stop. We're at our final property stop here in the Ironbound section of Newark. We're at 63-69 Rome Street. This is the outer eastern edge of Ironbound, right up against uh, the turnpike that's just behind this row of uh, buildings here. So across the street, this is a condo uh, development. You can see the garage door directly behind me. So 
There's an assigned parking spot to this particular unit. Uh, this one is, the, I mean, sorry, the list price on this one is uh, three fourteen nine, and it's sold at three fifteen. So just a hundred dollars above uh, the list price. And what's unique about this one is a two bedroom, one bath condo that has seventeen hundred square feet. And the uh, square footage essentially comes from a second floor, upper level, pretty much like an open rec room. So you imagine like a two bedroom, one bath uh, condo that has a basement. It's like the opposite. The open space is above on the second floor. So um, the two bedroom, one bath, the living and dining area, kitchen, it was uh, well maintained. Nothing newly upgraded, but, but well maintained. So that plus that open rec area that could be really anything. There's no bathroom or anything up there. It's just a big open space, but nonetheless, it gives utility of any variety in terms of comes to ideas of how you want to use that space. Um, and uh, garage parking come along with it, which is another major plus. Uh, maintenance fees 240, which is typical when you don't have a pool to maintain and not a lot of landscaping to have to maintain either. So uh, essentially takes care of whatever common areas there are on the, the development itself. So this is a um, really, I'd say a really good bargain for someone who is looking to have something that's relatively nearby transport and a very reasonable price with, you know, an opportunity maybe to use as investment somewhere down the road. So um, this is going to conclude our Ironbound section today. I did want to kind of feature, we are, if you haven't noticed, um, featuring some uh, attire for New Jersey Living Now. So uh, this is one of my uh, different polos that I'll be wearing for episodes. We have t-shirts now. So I am going to be giving away t-shirts. So I'm going to start it off just by giving away to have a request one. So if you drop a comment and comment request, I will absolutely send you a t-shirt. That's not, that's gonna be a limited time. That's not gonna go on indefinitely. But as so now, put in the comment, Corey, I'd like a t-shirt, you'll get one. I'll mail it to you. No shipping fees, it's absolutely free. These aren't things I'm trying to sell. In the meantime, be sure to click like, subscribe, and the notification bell. Stay updated on our upcoming content. We have some more, more very exciting places to take a look at and preview. And uh, please do, if you want to reach out to me directly, you can click the Calendly link to schedule a quick 15 minute phone call or just shoot me a text or an email or even phone call, all right, directly. All right, so thank you again for joining. I'll see you next episode.